A now-deceased radio evangelist gained a measure of notoriety in 2011 for publicly predicting that the rapture of the church would occur on May 21st of that year. His 2011 prediction was the second of three he is best known for. An earlier prediction stated that Christ's return might be on September 6, 1994. Then when the rapture failed to happen on May 21st, 2011, he said it would happen five months later, coinciding with the destruction of the world on October 21st. But of course, if you're reading these words today, which is June in 2015, you know that this man's predictions were not correct. The rapture has not occurred, and the world has not ended. Of course, at the time you're watching this, I don't know what time that will be. <laughs> Fortunately, before his death in 2013, this evangelist repented of his prophetic errors and agreed with his critics that Jesus' words in Matthew 24:36 should be taken literally. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Sadly, many people invested their hopes for the future in the man's erroneous predictions, investing time and resources in rearranging their earthly affairs, all for naught. But let's be careful. They were not wrong to prepare for the return of Jesus Christ. They were only wrong to trust a fallible source of information. Even though Jesus Christ himself said that no one knows the hour of his return, not even him, but only the Father, we don't understand the entirety of his trinity, but it's true. He also said that he would definitely return. John 14, 1 3, 18, and 28. And he also went to great lengths to convey the necessity of preparation, not being caught unaware when the end of the age begins, Matthew 25, 1-13. Though we do not know the day or hour of Christ appearing for his church, we do know something very important. It could be today. Why do I say that? Because nothing remains on God's prophetic calendar except the unfolding of end-time events. Beginning with the rapture of the church. Theologians call it the doctrine of imminence. The return of Christ is imminent, meaning it could happen at any moment. Because this hope is central to the life of every Christian, it must never be allowed to fade from our awareness. This issue of Turning Point is titled Perhaps Today, and I hope you will meditate for just a moment on that truth. Today, if you belong to Jesus Christ, you could be caught up to meet him in the air and be with him forever. If not today, then another day. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18 As long as modern churches have been holding revival meetings, they have used the imminent return of Christ to call Christians to be about the work of purity of life and preaching the gospel, all in anticipation of the return of Jesus Christ. And I pray that this issue of turning points will revive your own heart and hands as you clarify a biblical, trustworthy understanding of what the world, Word of God teaches on this central theme. Jesus warned the religious leaders of his day about their failure to understand the signs of the times, what God was doing in their own midst, Matthew 16, 1-4. Because I don't want to be guilty of that same failure, I am in the midst, or this was back in November, when he made The Agents of the Apocalypse Campaign, a new book plus radio and television broadcast. This is by David Jeremiah. The goal of this campaign was to present in a fresh and compelling way the signs of the end times as presented in the book of Revelation. It is imperative that we base our hope and knowledge of the future on God's inerrant er er timetable in Scripture. And perhaps today is the watchword for our generation, what do we need to know? There are three areas of our faith that are impacted by biblical prophecy, and we will uh, cover all three in this month's issue. Trusting God's plans instead of man's, living victoriously for Christ in the face of mounting obstacles, and reaching out to those who are living without hope in Christ. The two most important events in human history are the first and second comings of Jesus Christ. Rightfully, we invest great effort in understanding his first advent, but we must give no less attention to the second coming and its eternal ramifications, especially since it is perhaps today that this world-changing event could happen today.